Welcome into the Nike Hot Seat. I'm Emily Eman chatting with our Nike volleyball athletes across the world to highlight the ones who make this sport so incredible. Today, I'm joined by Justine Wangarantes, member of Team USA since 2017, where you helped the U.S. women to their first ever gold medal in the indoor volleyball in Tokyo Olympics. You were named the best libero of that entire tournament. Justine, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. I kind of want to start at the beginning. Both of your parents played volleyball and they're still heavily involved in the sport. What influence did that have on you becoming a volleyball player growing up? Yeah, I mean, um, like you said, they're very much involved in the sport. I think that's what kind of gravitated me towards the sport to begin with. Um, what was really cool is just I didn't feel any pressure to play the sport. It just became like an instantaneous passion for me, which I thought was the coolest part. I mean, um, volleyball just drew me to a lot of friendships, a lot of relationships. And I think it's created such a culture that, you know, sports just, um, to begin with, um, hopefully can create in your life. So that's what has drawn me to the sport. And even to this day, how involved were you growing up or how involved were they were with you growing up in terms of, of coaching and feedback and all of that? Um, my dad, not so much. He was like pretty chill. He was, more like my pepper partner and if I wanted to do drills or if I wanted to um, we played in, in like some father-daughter tournaments he was always the one that like really kind of repped it out with me whereas my mom was definitely the more vocal one I remember her <laughs> on the sidelines always like I used to be a setter back in the day so like on that right sideline you would hear her from the parents of bleachers like a few feet away, um, just telling me to stay on my line and things like that. So she was definitely more of like kind of that coach, coach role, but like never overstepped boundaries, which um, was nice. But it was, it was very nice because, you know, both of them knew the background, knew the sport. So if I did have any questions or if I wanted tips, I could always go back to them. In regards to sports, what's the most important thing that they taught you? Um, I think the biggest lesson that I've learned is just to work hard and never really take no for an answer. I mean, um, you can see that my whole career, I've been kind of the shorter one. And um, when I was in my younger days, when I was a setter, that was kind of a, a difficulty with playing in the front row. And um, I always wanted to be a 5-1 setter and play all across from the back row to the front row. And so my mom always taught me, you know, if you really want to fight for that spot, like fight for it, you're not going to um, be told no if you're you know just as as good as the other girls and you're fighting just as hard so I think that kind of followed through with the rest of my life and kind of that transition from setter to libero because when I was in college at Nebraska I mean there were so many other good liberos across the conference and for me I just felt like I was playing catch up and so I just kind of reminded myself hey like as long as I'm keep working hard keep getting the reps then I you know I kind of belong here and I'm um, I'm trying to prove myself type of thing. Yeah, you mentioned that transition from, you know, setter to libero, but even before that, I mean, your path to becoming just an indoor player was unique because you started out as such a good beach player, the youngest female to earn a triple A rating. How did you transition to kind of strictly indoor? Yeah, um, I think I always secretly had a passion for indoor volleyball. I just love the more of like the six on six and just kind of it for me it felt like more of a team sport not that beach volleyball isn't but I just felt like with more people on the court more roles more positions um I felt like it really just truly you had to rely on every single person on the court and so for me that was that was just more of a passion of mine and so as I think um, beach volleyball huge credit to beach volleyball because I think it allowed me to just learn the skills learn the court awareness that I did for indoor volleyball um, and of course like the the cardio definitely helped when <laughs> going from beach to indoor um, and so yeah for indoor volleyball I just knew I I really wanted to pursue college volleyball and so that was always you know kind of the the bigger goal once I was in club volleyball so I wanted to get to to college and then once I got to college I wanted to go to the USA team so and even with the USA team like there was always so many bigger goals ahead of me and I think that's kept me driven along the way. You mentioned how you were a setter in high school before becoming the libero at Nebraska where you ended up starting all four seasons coming into college where was your confidence level in your ability to be a, an elite libero at one of the best programs in the country? 
Yeah, I mean, I always felt, even like from freshman to senior year, I felt always kind of the need to play catch up, like I said before. Um, I just felt like with the lack of reps that I had gone before the college game, I just felt like I needed to, you know, get better every single day, whether that's, you know, coming in before practice, coming, staying longer after practice. And so it took me a while to really kind of shape my mindset and just say that I was good enough. You know, I wasn't going to be surpassing anyone, but I just wanted to be good enough. And that took me like that concept took me a while to grasp. But I think it was around my junior year where, you know, we were really, really good as a team. Like we got along and we were shaping this culture in Nebraska volleyball that, um, you know, the final four was going to be in Omaha. So I think we were all kind of on the same page as far as like the work ethic and the culture and the team dynamics. And so for me, that kind of clicked in my mind was that, okay, I am good enough to be on this team. And um, I am, you know, worthy enough to be starting on this Nebraska team. And I am a, an essential piece to this puzzle, essentially. Why do you feel like it took that long for that to click for you? Um, I just, I think really the lack of reps kind of like, um, yeah, I think it, it just kind of set me back a little bit. Mm. I just felt like, and I also I I do feel like with the kind of different role that I was putting into, it was it was different for me. Like a setter is kind of that quarterback of the team. You're involved in pretty much every single play. And so there wasn't really room for so much to go on through your head. Um, but as a libero, you know, people tend to across the net just, you know, um, they say they try to avoid you while you're serving or when you're defending, they try to avoid attacking to you. So I think um, with that kind of mindset, with not being involved in every single play, I think it allowed me to kind of like dig in deeper and and try to contribute in ways that maybe weren't with like volleyball and my performance, but more in ways with my voice and just directing. And so that for me in itself, I think took a little bit of time to recognize and just try to like fully embrace that role and and try to like honestly just like lift up people around me and try to um just be a, a good teammate yeah, it's different going from a setter like you mentioned the quarterback of a team to the libero it's still a leadership position but in sort of a different way so it takes time to definitely get used to that coming in you mentioned how you know you didn't want to surpass anybody but you ended up graduating with the all-time career digs record so <laughs> That handled itself. <laughs> After that, you went on to train at the national team. And in 2018, the team ended up going with a different libero, but you seemingly never stopped believing and working hard and having faith in yourself, earning that spot back. And of course, you know, leading USA to a gold medal in Tokyo. How do you think that switch in 2018 impacted you? Man, I get really like just emotional and chills because that was a really hard journey. And I think it's important to share that journey because I know like it's not just uh, an up road battle, an uphill battle or journey in, in anyone's career, honestly. So for me to like have those ups and downs were probably the most beneficial for me and my mindset and just really ultimately just asking if this is what I wanted to do and pursue. And so uh, I took a lot of time at home. I didn't go overseas that year. And so it was a lot of time like reflecting back on myself and my career and just uh, my goals essentially. And so I ultimately chose to keep going and just really like, that's what I wanted to do is make that Olympic team. And so that was always the end goal. And so whatever it took, that, that was what, you know, the path that I was going to take. Where do you think you found that drive to keep going? I think it was honestly losing that that position, that starting spot. Um, it kind of opened my eyes and just, I think, you know, everything that goes into being a professional athlete, you know, I was so, so unbelievably lucky with the resources that I had at Nebraska. But I think once you got to that professional level, it's like, okay, you kind of have to carry a little bit of load yourself. And that was honestly... Um, a wake up call for me is like, okay, I need to, I need to be getting in the gym, I need to be lifting harder, I need to get on a good nutrition diet, I need to get good sleep, kind of all these things that you know, you're supposed to do in college, but until you're on your own, it's like, okay, now I have to really hold this weight. And so for me, it was just kind of tapping into those, 
resources that USA um, were giving and um, and just really like fully, fully embrace it and grind. You've hinted at kind of that transition from the college to professional game. What do you think the hardest part of that transition is? Yeah, I mean, I think the game is just faster, I would say. Um, a lot of a lot of girls are able to play all the positions and um, there's a lot of substitutions in the game. So therefore, like a lot of people are just able to be well-rounded volleyball players. And so I think that in itself just, you know, sustains such a higher level in volleyball. Um, so it's really cool to see the, you know, the different transitions from from each like high school to college, college to pro and just like seeing the game evolve. Whether it's a, a young girl who maybe didn't make her club team or her spot got taken on the team she's on, I'm wondering what would your advice be for those young girls coming up and maybe wanting to follow in your footsteps or do something um, amazing as, as you've done in your career? Yeah, I mean, I would just tell them to to keep getting reps, whether it's on the beach, whether it's indoor, never specialize to any position. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me firsthand, I think, not that not that my coach in club ever specialized, but I think if I would have, you know, gotten a little bit more passing reps or digging reps or whatever it was, I think maybe my mindset alone would have changed during going into those Nebraska days. But I would just highly encourage any girl, whether a middle blocker, you're a setter, you're an outside hitter, just try to train all of the reps because you never know going into college what you may be asked to do. And then it just helps you so much understand the game, be a well-rounded player as well. I agree. I think especially for a lot of, you know, club players coming up now, it seems to get really specialized really early on. And, and that can kind of be a hindrance to how good you really can be in your career, especially when you get to college and coaches are shuffling stuff around all the time. But I, I love that advice. And, and Justine, thank you for, you know, bestowing your knowledge and diving into your experience with us. Um, I know people will have a lot to take away from this. So thank you. Yeah, thank you so much.